Well, praise the Lord in Jesus' holy and blessed name. What a beautiful day it is to be in Jesus. Oh, amen. Amen. Brother Tom is with you here, and this is a ministry of Jesus Christ. And today, brothers and sisters, a quick overview <clears throat> on some truth. Uh, and we call this the five non-negotiable truths. Today, there seems to be a push to deny certain aspects of the gospel that uh, ought not be denied. And I understand why the devil would like to do that. I really do. And so, just for clarity's sake, and I know I've done one or two messages similar to this in years past, but just as an update and a refresher uh, to make the point clear for those of you who don't go back two or three years and have not, perhaps not heard this. And so we'll cover a couple of subjects real quick here today. The five non-negotiable truths is what we call them here. All right, all right. The first is the deity of Jesus Christ. Jesus is deity. He is deity. Okay. No if, no ands, no buts. It's a non-negotiable truth. If you make him a created creature or anything other than God, you've made a mistake. It's wrong. Jesus is deity. He is the second member of the Godhead of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Now, I've heard all the arguments. There's, I'm I'm not here to debate it with you. I'm here to just simply tell you that it is the truth. So those who would like to comment negatively on the subject, there is no convincing this old preacher otherwise. So it is what it is. All right. Jesus is the Son of God, Son of Man. He is the Christ, the Son of the living God. As we learn in 1 John, there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit. And these three agree in one. They are one. They agree in one. They are one. Right? And I know that some people will say, well, that verse isn't in some of the earlier. We can go from Genesis to Revelation and follow the thread of the Godhead. And follow the thread of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost through the scriptures. I've done it. <laughs> okay. Praise the Lord. Now, really, Tom? Matthew chapter 1. Joseph is trying to decide whether or not he should now marry this young girl, Mary, who is pregnant. He put her away privately. What, what does he do? He knows the child's not hers, or his, excuse me, not his. So, while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take Mary unto thee, thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord, of the Lord by the, the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. <laughs> yes, I know, I know, but he is. He is the I am. Oh, yeah, John 8, 58, I believe it is. John 8, before Abraham was, I am. Clearly, he was saying that he is the I am of Exodus. And they knew what he meant because they picked up stones to cast at him to stone him to death. For blasphemy. 
Because if he's not the I am, but he is, he is, he is. All right, all right. There's no more if, ands, or buts about it. I say it so simply as it is, because that's the way it is. All right? That's the first of the non-negotiable truths, the deity of Jesus Christ. All right. Jesus asked the disciples, who do men say that I am? Oh, some say you're Elias, some say you're Jeremiah, some say you're John the Baptist. Who do you say that I am? Peter says, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Oh, and amen. Amen. Deity. And how is God with us? Born of the virgin birth, the second of the two, of the five fundamentals, uh, the virgin birth. The virgin birth is true. There is no explaining it away. He is no son of an earthly man. We just read in Matthew, conceived of the Holy Ghost. In Luke chapter 1, in the sixth month, uh, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin. This woman has never had sexual relations with a man. She is a virgin. A virgin espoused to a man whose name is, was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail thou that art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? The angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Jesus, born of the virgin birth. Amen. Deity. Born of the virgin birth. Jesus, the perfect Lamb of God, without spot or blemish, a sinless sacrifice. Jesus, who knew no sin, took upon himself our sin paid the price we cannot pay, could never pay, no how, no way. His innocent shed blood. A truth also that runs from the earliest pages of our Bible to the end. To know the truth. All the blood sacrifices of the innocent that had been shed to the coming of Christ pointed to him. And now, all that we preach unto you concerning the shed blood of Jesus Christ to the sinner, salvation, saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, by the finished work of Jesus Christ upon the cross at Calvary. When Jesus said, it is finished, it was finished. Your salvation paid for by his innocent shed blood. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sin. And there is no other. There's no other way. There's no other truth. There's no other life. No one, none of us can come to the Father but by Jesus. It is his sacrifice. His shed blood that pays the price for 
our salvation. And there is no other. Period. <laughs> Hallelujah. And Jesus was raised from the dead. Jesus is alive. We have a living Lord, a living Savior. Jesus is alive. While the Father raised Jesus from the dead. In Acts, we see Jesus, or we read of Jesus, ascending up into heaven after the resurrection. Mary and the others go to the tomb on that first day of the week. And there is an empty tomb. And the angel says, see, he is not here. He is risen. God raised Jesus from the dead. The resurrection is a fact. And the fact that Jesus is alive, raised from the dead, so shall we be. The resurrection is a fact. And the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the truth. Oh, and hallelujah. And... Jesus is coming again. That will be the fifth of the five fundamental truths of the faith. Jesus is coming a second time. As Jesus came the second, the first time, so shall he come the second time. Mm -hmm. Let me get her there. All right. Acts chapter 1. Now, Jesus is speaking to the disciples, and when he had spoken the things that he had to say to them, he, what? And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. He's coming again. Jesus is coming again. Now, oh, we're going right to it. Outstanding. Praise the Lord. First Thessalonians, chapter 4, starting in verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Oh, Clear enough? For this we say unto you by word of the Lord. He wasn't speaking by permission or what he thought was right or a good idea. This one is by the word of the Lord. That we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of an archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Jesus is coming again. Oh, and hallelujah. Five truths, non-negotiable. Jesus is deity. The virgin birth is true. His sinless life, therefore an atoning sacrifice, a willing sacrifice. Not only can he pay the price, but he's willing to pay the price and did pay. Uh, the Father raised Jesus from the dead, and Jesus is coming again. Five truths that I have no issue saying to you that these are true.
Anything less is not the gospel. Right. So the five truths. And amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> All right. Just hit, just move to clarify that. Bring it into today. For as we approach the end of this age, it's become very clear that however the devil can attack the church, dilute its truth, pervert its righteousness, he will try and do. And he has. When you follow the word from Genesis to Revelation, these five truths bear out and are the truth. When we walk in the Spirit, and it is the Spirit that guides, teaches, motivates. These truths are so, and we know them to be so. All right. Well, praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. Thank you for coming and sharing a few minutes with us today. And may God richly bless and keep you, for it truly is a glorious, blessed, and beautiful day to be in Jesus. Amen.